Hello all, we choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon not because they are easy. We choose to go to the moon and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. John F. Kennedy, 1962, at uh, Rice Stadium down in Houston. On July 16th, 1969, landing on July 20th, 1969, the lunar module, the LEM, piloted by Neil Armstrong, um, with uh, Aldrin, Buzz Aldrin and Mitchell on the command module. Buzz was with Neil. Um, Mike Mitchell? I don't know what the other dude's name was. Was up in the uh, Columbia command module orbiting the moon while the other two geniuses landed on the lunar surface. 50 years ago, I was born on April 4th. On July 20th, we landed on an extraterrestrial planet outside of our Earth. Uh, Nine-day mission. Uh, there's a gentleman who, for one reason or another, contacted the National Archives in Columbia, or College Park, College Park, Maryland, right up around D.C. Um, Thomas Michael Mitchell, or something like that. He's got three names. He is a geek. He does documentaries. He focuses on factual film. He's got a lot of good connections in that arena. He's extraordinarily good with video, with sound. They contacted the National Archives, uh, and the National Archives had pan, uh, Panavision film. So if you don't understand or know, the magnitude of this thing was so massive that they worked, the United States government worked with MGM, Metro Goldwyn Mayer, to make a movie about the Apollo missions, all of them, or eight through, you know, whatever, 15, um, 17, whatever we went through Apollo. Well, somewhere around the beginning of 1969, the relationship failed. But they used these Panavision cameras, and the, I think they're 65 millimeter, 70 millimeter. They're massive cameras. They are the modern day IMAX of. 1960s the best resolution the widest frame the highest quality um, I mean they are dazzling the National Archives in College Park Maryland housed hundreds they had hundreds of reels I think maybe maybe um, dozens of reels of this for with hundreds of hours and it was all of the Kennedy Space Center filming of the Apollo 11 mission. It was a nine day mission from when they suited up and launched to when they returned. Um, it started down there. They got loaded onto the uh, Mercury rocket. They launched. They then had a lunar um, portion of the mission where they left the orbit of the Earth. They went to the orbit of the moon. They returned. They landed. Um, they, they went to the orbit of the moon, they landed on the moon, they returned to the command module, they returned to the Earth, they landed on the Earth, and then they went into a quarantine. This is all captured through this film called Apollo 11 for the 50th anniversary with the top quality filming from this gentleman through the National Archives. There's 11,000 audio hours from the command center um, if you've ever been to Kennedy Space Center, they have the room. You can walk into the room where they made those launches. The command center that you see in these videos with all the computers of the 60s and all of the um, technicians and engineers. Dozens sitting in this thing, looking at massive screens, tracking this mission with comm lines. Uh, there were 32 different tracks that run on the audio out of the command center. So you had 32 different lines of conversation for each portion of the mission and each portion of the teams that managed specifics of the mission. The rocket, 
um, the computer, uh, the, um, the launch, uh, the lunar module, um, the lunar portion of the trip, all this is broken down, 11,000 hours. So this dude combed through all these archives of this top quality material and then turned it into a film and they tied the audio to it. They went through 11,000 hours of audio, they picked out all the high points. It turned into a nine day, nine day movie that he then truncated, cut, piecemealed out. This film, Apollo 11, doesn't have any external noise to it. It is probably the purest view of the Apollo 11 mission in a chronological or a linear form from the beginning to the end when they leave the quarantine, the astronauts. And it's purely that. There's no juxtaposition where they go to Neil Armstrong in 2019 or 18 and talk to him. There's no um, you know, post analysis and uh, conjecture and discussion on parts of the uh, program, uh, the events that occurred, none of that. It simply transports you back to that time in a uh, cinematic and an audio format of the highest quality and you are transported through this mission. And it shows you components of the mission that were captured um, and replicated, shipped to the archives, stored for posterity. And you hear, we hear so much noise about this. We lost the lunar pictures, we lost the lunar rocks. We, uh, dude, this stuff is all in places that it's captured. And 50 years later, this thing was pulled together with that data, with that media, with that material. So all the shit you hear in the news, this was done right, which is why it was a billion dollar endeavor back then. And when you watch this movie, you'll be awestruck. You don't have to like science or math. You don't have to, you don't even have to transport yourself back to a different culture or time. And some people will find that strange or offensive or whatever when you watch this, especially with the modern day hashtags and all these, you know, politically correct movements and these cultural changes. If you can't fucking put yourself into this thing, regardless of your a man, woman, child, if you're whatever the fuck you are and you don't find awe in what the hell we did, and it doesn't tie to a person like Kennedy, and it doesn't tie to a government like the United States, it ties to human, it ties to, to knowledge, advancement, goals, and striving, the best portions of what we are capable of. Just like watching Pele wheel kick a goal in fucking football or watching um, Usain Bolt break a record in the 100 meters to go the fastest a human has ever gone. This is a 90 plus minute film. It's probably going to be truncated. It was released in March in IMAX for a limited release and then it was re-released. The best way to watch this I've been told is IMAX with the massive screen which fits the film that took these pictures and then the audio with the massive Dolby whatever, Dolby 12 surround, you know, real sound, real 3D sound or whatever the hell it is, man. Um, I didn't see that. It's gonna be released this evening, Sunday on national, or on CNN. Well, this is a CNN film. This was um, requested and driven and sponsored and paid for by CNN through this director. Um, and it's going to show this Sunday, next Sunday. This is a celebration of probably one of the greatest feats in human history. Not probably. One of the greatest feats in human history. We left this fucking planet and landed on another. Another stellar fucking body. My God. And I'm 50. I was just here and this thing happened. But anyone beyond my age in that prior generation, in any prior generation, and God bless if they're still on this planet. You ask them, where were you in 1969 on July 20th when we fucking landed on the moon? There ain't a person that can't tell you where they were. Oh, I remember that. Million, any TV that was on, on this planet that had power, that was receiving a signal, 
had uh, Walter Cronkite or whomever it was showing the moon landing. We were mesmerized. We were awestruck. And you got these cracker jacks that say it didn't happen. These fucking conspiracy theorists. What? God bless you all, you little pea brains. I love the wrinkles in reality that you provide us. Spend a minute and watch this documentary. Even if it isn't on IMAX and surround sound and all that. This gave faith to the human race for all. For everyone everywhere. Unity. My God. It goes through all aspects of the launch. It's very solemn. It's very direct. It's factual. It shows you the mindset of these astronauts, the program. It shows you what's necessary to, to try to even accomplish this. The science involved, the difficulties, the achievement, the anxiety, the buildup of the stress. There's a beautiful soundtrack that a gentleman created utilizing legacy technology. A lot of the digital um, sound effects were used off of 1960s um, mixers. So this guy had a wall of them cross-connected with cable and made all these, uh, you know, um, electronic and uh, space-based soundtracks that build with percussion and pulse when, it, you get, when you know that there's something big and important. The, the cinematography is stuff you haven't seen. It's not the shots you've seen again and again of the Mercury rocket launching and the ice coming off it. This shows the launch of the entire rocket, head to toe, 300 plus foot vehicle, right? Those rocket engines with five, seven million pounds of thrust, right? 3,000 tons. This stuff today would astound Elon Musk. This shit today. 50 years later, it challenges the crap he's doing now. Ties back to Werner von Braun, the fucking genius Nazi, who was the father of modern rocketry. This is huge in humanity. And I love it, and I get excited by it. And if you don't, you're still going to get excited by it. The filming... The views, the personnel. There isn't a story on television, in the movies, on Facebook, on Netflix, on Hulu, anywhere that has this kind of storyline, build, intensity, excitement, all. This is your modern fucking day real Game of Thrones. The real Game of Thrones. No bullshit dragons. This ain't sci-fi and CGI. This is it, man. So I hope you spend a minute and you watch this thing and you enjoy it. Um, it's going to be showing here. And revel in probably one of the greatest successes we'll ever have as humans. And it sets a bar. And it's hard because we've sort of dwindled from that bar um, on a global scale. You know, we've had the resurgence of race and religion and sexuality. And those things take away from sheer achievement. And when you hear mission control... You hear uh, the guy that heads that up, played by Ed Harris, right? In Apollo 13 or whatever it was. When you hear um, the sacrifices of these engineers who tell you, I lived at that base. I gave up decades of my life to develop that program. The Apollo program, the Mercury program prior, right? I gave all that I had. And in hindsight, I probably gave up my family, my life, for that achievement and my god what an achievement it was but i don't know if it was worth it but my god we put people on another planet that's the trade-off man and we as a race did that and this country and that program and our government pursued that and individuals scientists in our daily lives sacrificed all for that Fucking unreal, man. Not many programs like that presently in operation in modern times because they are astounding in their accomplishment. And it's not Facebook. And it's not fucking Bezos or Zuckerberg. And it is a touch of Musk. A touch of Musk. That guy's sort of trying to do it. 
but watch this thing, enjoy this thing. I think you're gonna find it unreal and it will give you knowledge. You'll see how Armstrong in landing had to transition across the face of the moon because they were landing in a boulder field. So he took control of the lunar landing module, the Eagle, and actually piloted this fucking thing. He flew it on the moon vertically while he was descending to the sea of tranquility where he could land without upsetting this craft and the dynamics, the measurements, the error codes that are showing, the fuel dropping. These are mechanical, man. Computers. This thing's more powerful than everything that ran that. It's a mechanical fuel measure. You see it disappearing. He's flying it on a foreign space body. The stones on that bitch. And then he comes back and he just says it's an achievement. We all won. Give me a fucking break. I haven't seen that in a long time, man. That type of humble superiority excellence, endeavor, fucking A, strange man, it's awesome to see, I'm going to watch it, I'm going to enjoy it, I didn't see it at the IMAX, I hope you do too, Just comment, like, subscribe, share, I'm not going to put many clips in here, I tried to keep this short, I hope you watch this thing, I hope you like it on the Dave DUI show, I hope you celebrate it, out!